so uh, and I said, let me ask this question: Is it uh, is Peter Obi's rising profile uh, an obstacle to show his presidential ambition? No, I answered this question too many times yes. already. It's an election and it's competition. You discuss everything around an election: candidates, their programs, parties, events happening around them. And um, for thirty-two years, I've been discussing the other candidates. He's uh, on the block. You know, there are no boundaries when it comes to elections. Talk about everybody. Talk about their character, their programs, their persons. Um, you don't know who is going to win an election until the election is over. There's a, uh, there's a guy they call Yogi Berra in the U.S. who is a yeah. baseball player. He says it's, it's, it's end over until it is over. So talking about election in 2023, yes. you know, I, I for person believe that they said you have to be strong in your grassroots. Yes. You know, you have to be, they have to do you very well. Now, my question to you is, why the presidency? Because... Are you are asking me why I'm contesting for presidency? There are a lot of... I'm qualified. Are... Even overqualified. I'm more qualified than... Why, what are your things. proof? The proof that I'm qualified? Yeah. I, um, I, by age, I'm qualified. By character, I'm qualified. By experience, I'm qualified. By exposure, I'm qualified. In fact, better qualified than most of the candidates that are running. The only thing that I may not have been qualified, uh, you know, that most people consider is that I'm not a thief. I don't, I'm not stolen public money. But have you done, have you done grassroots politics before now? Absolutely. So, do you want to mention? I, you know, I started in this country as a student union. Yes, leader. that we, we yes. know that so, one's popular. And I mean, that was from your constituency. Yes. Uh, you mean having been in position of uh, no, not position electoral power. politics? Does it maybe, you know, you, you, you opened one of the biggest online platforms. Yes. Means, yes. Which was great. That's something that a that, lot that's of us, grassroots yeah, too. That's grassroots. Yeah. Yes. But for your people, have you done anything? Which people? Your people from where you're from. No, well, I mean, I want you to be specific because I've never been like a local provincial yes. person yeah i'm i'm a global citizen and uh when you say my people everybody is my people you know all africans are my people every okay, nigerian so. are my people all right let's look at the state all of the oppressed country. persons are my people yeah you're oppressed too <laughs> yes so, uh, let's look at the state of the country yes do you think uh uh, because there was a video of you that came out and people were saying you were jubilating, which of course I understood your point. But now, do you think that the country has done well from 2015? Definitely not. That's why I called for a revolution in 2019. I wanted to, I want the country to end the misery that we call government or governance in this country. How can I think that we did well? If I, why did I go to spend four months in jail in 2019, restricted to Abuja for, for three years after that? My brother was uh, shot and killed. I was shot myself in Abuja. How I, did that case go? Which case? The one where you got shot and you even took it, nothing, nothing happened. The police officer was not even queried. I brought a petition to them. I know nothing would come out of it. They wanted to uh, kill me. So, and they don't hide it. They don't hide it in Abuja. When they stopped using police, they started bringing thugs with dagger. All these things were captured until they broke my car. Uh, there's nothing they haven't done to me. You answered a question and said they gave you 30 something thousand, that INEC gave you 30 something Allocated. Allocated, sorry. Yes. Allocated 30 something thousand votes Vote. to you. Last election. Uh, last selection. Like, okay, whatever you call it. Yes. But, but why didn't you think it was necessary to go to court if you thought that it was allocated and didn't really come? You also have to believe in the justice system for you to not be wasting your time there. Mm. When I didn't think that any judge. In Nigeria today, can overturn a rigged election. Anybody who's from Imo State can testify to that. The Supreme Court imposed a governor that didn't, that didn't even come second on them as an election. So why would I waste my time? If, even if I wanted to do that, it was uh, too late. I had taken another decision upon that injustice, the electoral heist, to plan for and work towards a revolutionary outcome. And I, that's what I set out to do. After, instead of going to court, I went to the people. Mm -hmm. All right, so come 2023, because we've also heard you say things like um, you've never had like a free and fair election in this country. Yes. But come 2023, um, do you have confidence in INEC for regards to of course conducting the election? And of course, the new bill that's been signed. No, I, you know, why I keep fighting, you know, since my university was because I've never had confidence in. You know, government institutions in Nigeria. I've never had confidence in police. You know, and INEC is uh, not different. I've never had confidence in the justice system. But I think 
you cannot even sometimes educate people without testing some of these contradictions. So that sometimes people's eyes open to these contradictions because you go in there and challenge it. And you could also, you know, we could be lucky that if they see that we are stronger, we are mobilized to the barricades, and we really want more free and fair election, people come out on election day. We can force their hand to allow free and fair election. It's possible. That's, that's, that is why I do what I do. I don't give up. I'm, you know, um, in, in terms of Nigeria, I, I will confess openly that I'm a pessimist. I hope for, uh, you know, I expect the best. And I hope for, you know, uh, I hope for the worst and expect the best. Talking of confidence, a lot yeah. of persons have said, it's actually like a power shift in this region. You know, we have a person job for eight years. We had Jaraja for two and a half years. Then we had Jonathan for six years. Mm -hmm. Now we have the president running for eight, eight years, years now. Yes. And, you know, PDP, we have a northern candidate already. We have a southern. So, some people have said the power should shift to this extent. It should shift here. What's your take on that? Why do you think the power, power should shift? Power no, I, I, I believe that power should shift to the people. That's Why the people? The people who should enjoy, you know, the dividends of democracy. There is no part of the Nigerian constitution that says that power must be shifting on a geographical basis. The most important thing is to have a qualitative argument about leadership. All these people you have mentioned, Obasanjo was president of Nigeria for eight years. He couldn't construct a road from Lagos to his farm in Ota. You understand? Jonathan was president of Nigeria for six years. What did Niger Delta people get? They are, they are the most uh, vilified people now. They call them oil thieves. You understand? The course. He didn't build any schools. They didn't even complete the East-West Highway. You know that he met in there. They did nothing. So people should stop voting for people based on where they come from. It should be based on what they have to offer. And if you look at me and the kind of life I've lived, it doesn't have any ethnic coloration to it. If there's an injustice against an, uh, someone from the South, if, if it's against Shiites, I jump on the case. If it's against students, youths, I jump on the case. You know, you should vote for the guy who care about you, mm -hmm. not the guy who is from your neighborhood, because these other persons have truly shown that they don't care about their people. I am one of the few candidates that has never been a governor before. The four other guys are, you know, that are on the front lines or that are frequently mentioned had nothing to offer. The guy who was in Kano, Amajiri, you know, 20 million schools out of uh, out of school. How do you vote for those people to go and, you know, on a rotational basis? The person who is there today is from the north. Even his home state, Kasina, you can't go there. His own people, are they benefiting from the rotation of power that, that went to wherever he came from? Let's not reduce, you know, the, the, the you know the question of governance okay, so this to this rudiments of manipulation by politicians because very soon they will come and say it should be the turn of the Christians it should be the turn of the Muslims We're also fighting yes. that war. so when it's going to be the turn of uh, non Christians and no Muslims you know it's, it's just very petty argument about why you know, Haruna Magashi why did you pick him as your vice is uh, before he answers that yeah. so we have uh, a caller on hold but Yes, 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 yes. Only once. Just once. Twenty nineteen. All right. Thank you so much. You heard the question. Yeah, I heard the question. Of course, they are all lies. Uh, let me start with my student union days. I was the student union president of the University of Lagos Student Union here in Lagos between 1992 and 1994. There is no controversy about it. The only controversy was that we were against military rule. I was uh, arrested several times. 
I was expelled from the university uh, for being against the military and also expelled from the university because I fought against courtism. Anybody who attended the University of Lagos knows this. The information is public. So why come on national radio and tell a cheap lie? But that's fine. This is political season, I understand. Uh, with regards to our party, our party was established by me and a few others in 2018, August, basically. It was registered. And two, I mean, a few months later, up to February, we had conducted, participated in an election. But that it is typical of the Nigerian state, any party that is progressive, they go in there and try to hijack. They hijack the party from us using one of our members. We didn't do anything but go to court. We went to court and the appeal court ruled that they were wrong to have recognized him. The reason was that the party was used in uh, River State to try to unseat Wiki by Abechi and the rest of them. And we rejected it. We said, no. Our candidate, this candidate, we 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 are not part of this. It's on record. So we came went and bribed this guy so that he would support him in the he tribunal. Used the word bribe. bribe, yes, of course. And you're sure that he of course, you know, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a journalist. I yes, caught, I, I caught Wiki on phone before bribing INEC officials. The INEC officials went to jail. It's on it's on That's record. It's on it's nice. on YouTube. I don't remember the exact year, but he was. We caught him on tape. He was phoning INEC. He said, if they don't deliver the election to him, he'll kill them. They were arrested and tried. So everybody knows Wiki as the chief bribery officer of Nigeria. But so it is, you it is, what? it's a lawyer. Okay. It can sue me. I'm saying it. And I'm a public figure. And I can present this in court that this is your voice. You were bribing I think officials. You see, part of our problem in Nigeria is institutional memory don't exist. We just don't remember things if they last more than two days, sometimes two hours. Otherwise, we won't be in this problem. And the fact that we don't teach history in our schools is the reason why Nigerians are celebrating the Queen, you know, who died yesterday. And they forgot that five million Biafrans were killed by her act alone during the Civil War. You don't, we don't remember anything. And when you don't remember anything, it's even easy for you to perish. So I go back to the party issue that he raised. Yes. Yeah. I the party. We won the election on June 2nd. I mean, a court of appeal. On June 2nd, the party was restored. Completely to us. The judges said they were alarmed at what INEC did by recognizing people who were not you know, legitimate leader of the party. But they needed to do that because while I was in detention, they went and did the Kangaroo Convention, and the guy claimed to be the, the, uh, claimed to be chairman of the party. He was removed from the party. So I was the one who established the party, uh, the original chairman of the party. And when we came back from the convention, we went for presidential election. We were recognized by INEC. If you go to the web website of INEC, our names are there. Yeah, yeah. So so when people come online like this and say you can't manage a party, which party in Nigeria today can be managed? Is the PDP not in crisis? Mm, you know, crisis. is the APC not having its own crisis? Internal affairs of parties are not a determination for politics, especially when there are outsiders interfering inside these party affairs. But look at where I've always stood. Started the party never left the party. Even when the party was not available, I stood and fought. That's why I'm different. I'm not like these other politicians who sleep as PDP. The next day they wake up, they have become APC. Right. That is, that is, that is not consistent. This is a question that current. just popped into my head. Yes. Uh, the, the, the fact that you've been the chairman, the, 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 sorry, the, 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 the person who started the political party, yes. you, you run as a presidential candidate, yes. and then you're still running. Yes. Uh, doesn't that say a lot? Like, okay, you are the chairman, or you're the head, you're the owner of the party. Let's let's put it that. It's not. I don't okay, want. I don't want to put. I don't want to put that soon because other people are there, participated. Are there. Is there no any other? Is there no uh, person that can also stand out and be while you? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Even I have stepped down as the chairman of the party during the last election, but we are going to have a special convention, and I've said it. I am not going to continue as chairman of the party. The special convention is coming up. Had they not hijacked the party, we would have done the convention that changed the chairman. I'm not interested to become a perpetual chairman of a political party. I love my freedom too much. So how do you handle being the chairman and also being the presidential candidate? Right now, I am, I've ceded the chairmanship position, stepped down from it. But I would be honest to say that I still run, you know, I sign documents until that period 
where we have a convention and the chairman is legitimately elected. So, but in terms of day-to-day -day activities of the party, no, I, I'm a presidential candidate. That's what I'm doing, and that's why I'm campaigning this time. But most importantly, the party does, in, you know, has a constitution that allows for you can be a presidential, you can be a candidate and be a party official. It's in the constitution of the party. Nothing is violated. But I see what the point you're trying to make. That you know, it looks like you know you have an owner syndrome yes, where that, that, yeah, no, it's not, no, but that's I I, you know, I just want to clarify that a lot of people who have been chairman and candidates of their party. It's, it's not, it's not a, a problem. But I'm, I've explained to you what you need to know about the run of the party. You have been a very strong activist, and um, one of the major strong activists in Nigeria. And so we've seen some activists after fighting, 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 fighting. In fact, you've had it tough with the current government. We've seen you in court several as, times. Uh, even as much as they said, they said, you were instrumental to making them uh, become who they are. No. Okay, so I'm trying to challenge you to something. In one of your interviews, you said um, you helped Peter to become the Labour candidate. And Labour also, Party. Labour, candidate. Labour, Labour yeah. Party candidate. These are things I want you to throw more light for Nigerians. Now, first one as an activist, how do you want to manage? Look at Ghanifa, after all the struggle. Ask, ask a question in such a way that I can attend to it. Okay. Okay, okay. 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 All right, good morning. Welcome. What is your name? All right, Cyril, you have um, 40 seconds, quickly. Yes, yeah. sure. Good morning. Go ahead, I think. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So that is the same question that OK James also had here on Twitter, where he's saying that um, you do not have a single experience with regards to government and you want to become president. Well, you know, what is experience? It's public service. I've been in public service, but not government, for 32 years, three decades. What was the most important thing in the 90s for Nigeria? You struggle for democracy. I participated in it. I went out there, I spoke, you know, March, I got into trouble, got into prison. And I just had democracy in 1999. Experience, what other experience do you need apart from the experience that I don't have that I'd like to talk about? I don't have experience in stealing, killing people, kidnapping, you know, connivance and conspiracy against Nigerian people. If the experience they are talking about were to be helpful to Nigeria, then the former president under military who ran for office as democratic uh, president would have turned Nigeria around. We would be like the UAE now. But the experience is not, it's the inverse kind of experience people are talking When countries need great leaders, they go and look for people with character. That was how Mandela came from detention, jail. 28 years after he was in jail, they brought him out to lead the first demo democratic experience in South Africa. Obama, that all of you talk about a lot today, started first as a community organizer. You understand? So there's no, there's no reason we keep talking about experience when you have seen what experience has done to your country, has turned it into a shock and a disgrace. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you said you have
economy. Yes, what our economy is lacking is proper management, transparent, honest management. Uh, because there are two components to it. There's the issue of macroeconomic policy that is being short change. One of the most important policies in the macroeconomic sector is how you control uh, your currency. Today, the Nigerian Naira has three different exchange rates. That's a scam. You don't need three exchange You know, what our macroeconomic managers are doing is just flipping dollar. And if you don't get rid of those, uh, you are wasting your time. Where does then the most important. Bank what, where does the central bank come in in this? In the macroeconomic side of uh, things. And that's why first thing I would do as president of Nigeria is to turn around the central bank of Nigeria, put people who are competent, who understand the political economy that we want to operate in, which is to invest in our people. And then the other good things that must happen before you can control and have a good economy is you must invest in your people. You cannot have great economy when you close down universities for seven months a year because the people who are going to run the economy in the future are out of school. You can't have economy when you don't have power, you don't have security. You must invest in all these sectors. And the investments must be in Nigeria, not outside of Nigeria. Hi, good morning. Hello, good morning. All right, welcome, Wilmina. Go ahead. <laughs> Never. Yeah. You 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 have a cocktail. Let's let's just take it one yeah, after the other. And very yes. quickly too. Right. Um you know, Nam the Cardinal Sunday Bo, they are products of the system, you know, injustices. They are fighting to say, look, we are tired of this Nigeria, we want out of Nigeria. You cannot solve the problem by putting them in jail. You are just wasting your time. Even if you kill Kano today, another Kano or probably more solid Kano will come out. But look at it. Just the excitement that the election might produce some kind of justice is getting people to even step away from those fringe positions. I will free Kano. He's my friend. You know, the first thing I will do in office, I free him. I apologize to him. Rehabilitate. You apologize to him? I will apologize to him. Yes. You, don't, you don't think some of the things that he did uh, before if, if, he did, if, if he did anything by now, they would have been able to prosecute it. They would have presented it in the public. You know, I, know, I know how government operates. They lied against me that I have, I collected $100 million yes, from exactly. Dubai. I've never been to Dubai before. Never stepped on the soil of Dubai. I only had, had twi twice, you know, transited through Dubai to Australia and Kenya. When I presented my, when they collected my passport, they saw that I've never been to Dubai. They went and removed the charges. That of money laundering. They never said it to the public. So government has a way of lying about people. Like the guy they arrested now yesterday from Egypt. You are, you are only hear their own side of the story. You have not heard this. When you hear his own side of the story now, you'll be shocked that he didn't do any of those things. Oh, we found some military hardware in his house. Why do you allow him to travel to Egypt? But before, if you, his house but before has, you run the, the, before you release them, yes. would you want to have a conversation? Maybe you I will. I will. Court Absolutely. I, I want to have a conversation with them. I want to sit down with them. What do you want? How can we resolve this problem? You understand? That is very important. You see, in countries around the world, any act of banditry terrorism that lasted for three years needs more than one approach to solution. Even some of these terrorists, we need to talk to them. Hear them out. Why are you doing this? You know, that doesn't mean that we will not secure our country. We will still go ahead and militarily secure the country, get police to go after people. Because it's the failure of security that has caused this problem. Mostly economic and social security. Most of the guys who are bandits today are the people we didn't send to school when it was good to send them to school. If you close university for seven, uh, seven months now, you are already preparing another banditry and economic, I mean, terrorism crisis for the future. Because... When students don't graduate, they will find a way to survive. The 20 million out school kids that are out of school, those are potential terrorists in the future. It doesn't mean that if people go to school, they cannot become terrorists because those who are managing our economy, they are economic terrorists too. 
and they are bleeding the country more than Boko Haram. So what do you intend to do with education? Seeing that massive that investment. In fact, there has to be a declaration of a state of emergency in the education sector as soon as we are sworn in. Then invest heavily in it. Part of why the state of emergency is needed is to have that ability to invest in education, investigate what's happening there. By four years in office, we must be able to reduce the number of out of school children. Like I've always said, and the way to break it down, it will be a crime for a parent not to send their child to school. It will be, they are also right to go to court to seek economic uh, relief if the government refuses to provide schools for their children. And I am not interested in universal basic education of using slates anymore. We have to be able to prepare our kids to be able to cope with the rest of the world. Okay, so these things are said. Yes. Until you get into the seat of power yeah. and you look at how much Nigeria is owing, I'm sure you've heard that, that story back to back and how much we're making as a country. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say, okay, we will do this, we will do this. When you get there and you see the results, how do you deal with this? It's, you see, everybody that has come to Nigeria in my lifetime, seven presidents I've seen, always say that Nigeria was broke. But when they leave, when they leave office, they become rich. So how do you become rich from a broke system? Because most of them always break the banks of Nigeria. The money that we need to take care of our needs on a yearly basis, they are budgeted for. If the accountant general steals $150 billion from the budget, you have already dislocated the budget. So these monies are there. I am not saying that we have all the money we need to turn Nigeria into a Dorado overnight. But look at countries that are surviving or that are doing so well. It is when the leaders decide to make the sacrifice and they bring in competent hands, they hire good people, they stop stealing and bleeding their country. The countries work. There is no reason, and I said it's just a small example, that Lagos Ibadan Highway should be reconstructed for 30 years. It has never happened before anywhere in the world. It's still under, contra uh, under construction. construction. I met Lagos Ibadan Express Highway reconstruction in 1987, when I first came to Lagos, this is 2022. It's still under reconstruction. We have paid for that road probably 40 different times, budgeted for. But what is happening? They just steal the money. They even damage the road so that they can get more money. We well, have so selfish, wicked, incompetent, soulless leaders. You will always be broke when all your Economic agenda is to take care of the greedy. You can never, I've never seen a greedy man who is ever satisfied. You know, right. never. Uh, you can't satisfy right. them. Okay. I'll take a hot topic on the coffee gang. Of course, uh, we just spent a little bit of our time. So, do you have any question for the presidential candidate for the AAC talking about the African Action Congress? Remember, you can call on 081 or 081-8243 Two six five nine one. You can also send a WhatsApp message to zero eight one eight two zero zero eight nine nine three three or people dot at fm underscore. So, all right. So I, I asked this question. Uh, the North, you know, politics is a question of numbers. Yes. And the North has got uh, two strong people who are, you know, they're going to brush themselves up. And I was expecting you coming, maybe getting someone from the North who is also very strong. And that uh, you seem to have found, according to what you say. Yes. But do you think Haruna Magashi is somebody, <coughs> who, you know, uh, you know, go head to head with people like Atiku and people like uh, as Konkoso? What is interesting about the North is that the South don't understand the North completely. Northerners have always looked for people of integrity. That is why it was easy for Buhari to scam them. They call him Megaskia. Yeah. Yes. And that's how he got his 12 million votes in every election season. Until they found out that he's Manafiki Banza. Uh, and they we, are we, we, we're going to say we didn't ask him to say All right. That. I'm saying it. I put it on my Facebook. That's for the poor. And he works in the city of Kano. Kano has an interesting history of going with underdogs. That was how Aminu Kano became a popular politician in Kano. And this is what Mogashi has been doing. Yes, we have money bags, but we are not doing an election for money. We are doing an election for freedom of the people. And Mogashi has been doing that. It, it would interest you. Uh, we shouldn't hide this place known. 
is a lawyer to the Shiites. You know, he one of the lawyers to exactly. Exact. So he's very popular also in those circles. But I'm, I'm just saying that it's important that we don't trump our, restrict. restrict our options because of money. Because it is money bags that took us to the bag that we're in now. And, you know, they tied it up. So for your political party, uh, the, the, the vice is also, uh, I, I wouldn't want to call him this, but probably the world will look at because he's the lawyer for the Shites. Yeah. You know how some people also view the Shites and El Zagzaki. Yeah. Uh, do would you say that two controversial people because you well, he's not controversial okay. i i don't think that anybody in the north hates shares no not yeah. hate yes yeah. i because there are 10 million shares in the north unfortunately they don't used to vote if shares vote in nigeria they will be determining election results in the north a lot but i hear that they have now also set up their own political commission uh, because they have also discussed, discovered that elections or non-participation elections have consequences. If they were a political force as much as a, you know, a social or religious force, probably they wouldn't have taken them for granted the way they did. Uh, that led to the killing of several of them in that unfortunate uh, massacre that happened in Zaria. So, but the control, there's no controversy there. He's a lawyer. He fights for human rights, just the same way. Femi Falano is also a lawyer of the Shiites. Uh, just the same way I sympathize and work with the Shiites. I have sympathy for the rights of self-determination groups. Sunday so Boho, uh, Nambi Kano. I have serious support, you know, support for young people. I participated in NSAS, which happened not too, not too far from here. And so these are elements in society that society cannot Ignore. And anybody who is fighting for these persons are persons who are willing to make the kind of sacrifices <clears throat> we need in government. Because he could have opted to be a government lawyer and be making money. There are sheds who are police officers, soldiers. You know, the Minister of Education is a shed. And I'm one of But I don't know his kind of shed. Right. Like he so, now, before we, like, I, I have this question. Yes. Do you have, um, like, do you think sometimes your words come across like uh, uh, threats? Like, no. you just, you just, you, you made a statement that when I come in, I'm going to abolish NBC. NBC. Now, people who have parents who work there, do you think they would love to vote for you? Looking at some of these circumstances as well. If you have parents who are working at NBC, I don't think you'll be proud of them. Because the NBC is standing in the way of freedom of speech. I went to Ghana, Accra, one day. There are 14 radio stations in Accra alone. And they speak in different languages. Yes, Three, yeah. Yeah. One day, a taxi driver forgot to collect, you know, fares from me because he was phoning me. And he told me, he said, I said, why are you all interested in radio? Yeah, you don't even collect. He said, it was the amount of voices that are on radio are able to express themselves that didn't allow Ghana to go into election crisis in one year because they could speak out their minds. He said, otherwise, we would have been like Kenya, where there was a crisis that led to people even being sent to the International Criminal Court because of election violence. Nigeria has 200 million people. We don't even have radio stations enough to cover 10 million of them. And we are there telling people, oh, you can't say this, you can't say that. The saddest part about the NBC is that the people who are writing you letters are threatening you and who are curtailing your rights to freedom of speech themselves don't understand radio. They don't understand freedom of speech. They don't understand the media. You don't think but, some people take advantage of it? Like, I'll give you an example of what happened in uh, Rwanda. Yeah. It started from the radio. You don't yeah. think the NBC is trying to protect these the, kind of... The, like I, I stayed in the, the Southeast. I worked in the Southeast for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And when the IPOB situation came, <coughs> some people took advantage of it and it cost them something as well. But don't you think that sometimes not maybe uh, keeping a balance will cause us a problem? You, you see, let me explain to you. There were over... 10 African countries that went into war in the 90s. All of them had one radio station and TV station controlled by the government. Because there's no avenue for expression. People have pent up anger, they can't express it. 
even the Rwanda case we are talking about, it's the entire highway. It's the government radio station that started the war. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, it's, you know, the NTA has been lying to us, first news, since God knows what. And you don't accuse them of false news. I told Lai Mohammed at the conference one day at National, no, it wasn't there, some government officials, that when you come out on NTA and say that the economy is doing well, you are dissipating false news. Because what is on the street is contrary to that. And they couldn't defend it. That was how we were able to solve the problem of the bill they were going to make at that time that never saw the light of the day. And of course, they capitalize on answers to go after social media. The other part is that you are regulating few radio stations. How, when are you going to start regulating Facebook? As I'm talking to you now, we are broadcasting through Facebook. There are probably, I've counted over a thousand radio stations on Facebook run by Nigerians. Some of them have more listeners than most of you who are conventional radio stations. What are you going to do about them? And some of them are in their basements in America, UK. You know, that's how they propagated the uh, iPod. When you decided to shut down iPod transmitters, they went online. So you have to just ensure that you are living with the times. But the other good news about it is that the multiplicity of these outlets are also helpful in regulating it. It's self-regulating. I was a media for, you know, since 2006, I started Sahara, but I had the Sahara FM radio at the point. I had all kinds of media platforms all fused together. And I discovered that the place we get the most regulation from are the comment commentators. If you lie, they will say you lie. Some will unfollow you. Sometimes they'll campaign against you. Those ones regulate you more than NBC. Are you getting my point? So it's for people who are our leaders to understand that so many of them are living in the past. And this is why we always call for digital leadership in the country. Because our leaders, we are in a digital race and our leaders are in the analog times. We have to reconcile that by electing, you know, and appointing new people and getting rid of okay, not any of this. It, but... no, I, I, I'm not only talking, it's not a threat that we abolish the NBC. It's not necessary anymore. I've also spoken I... about getting rid of one of the arms of the National Assembly. We, we, don't, we don't need a bicamera. This conversation. Yes. yes I, I, I'm, I a, I'm, a, I'm a presidential candidate. Have... I'm allowed to tell people what yes. I will do as what president of Nigeria. It's not subject to what MBC can regulate. There are a number of comments there. Um, Gigi from Obani Bureau says, Good morning, great people. My name is Gigi. Thank you for bringing my newly adopted mentor, Nida, and mm -hmm. my president to the show. I've just had my haircut and I told them to name the style as Showtime. That's, Everywhere I go, I'm a That's my style. Showtime. That's my haircut style. Um, another message, Osan Mokor from Ibimi says, um, If not anything, sir, please do this one thing when you win, because I know that you will. Turn our Nigerian passport to the best passport in Africa that other countries will stop my treating us at their borders. I want to be proud of my country. And um, in you, I see that hope. Thank you. Okay, seeing the hope in you, um, a lot of time we put the blame on the government. You as an activist, you've said, you know, fight for the government. Don't you think we have a citizenship problem in Nigeria? Because some of us don't pay tax. Some of us, there are some things, we destroy government properties. So I want us, do, do you think the citizens are perfect? The government is the worst because that's most time the picture we paint. No, is it can't be blaming citizens. Citizens, you know, leaders are people who are you know are saddled with public trust. So the moment you vote for a leader, your job is done. They are supposed to go and do what they are expected to do. When you talk about taxes, there is no way in the world that citizens like to pay taxes. Yeah, even in America. <laughs> exactly. But you have you to know, force it. Yes, you, 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 but it's, it's, it's the job of the government to collect taxes. But you discover that even the Nigerian government doesn't like collecting taxes. Okay, Why? Because right if people pay taxes, they hold the government more accountable. Yeah. Let me just answer it in two ways. The country is not broke, but it's been bankrupted. Those are two different things. And the reason I say this is that if Nigeria is broke and it has nothing to offer, why would people be killing themselves to be president of a broke country? You know, look at the amount of investment, money that they are putting aside to be president. That means there's something there. Because Nigerian leaders or the elite, they will never go and invest in something that will not give them returns. The rate of the, 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 the ROI in becoming presidential, the president of a country, governorship, is a big deal because the country is not broke. There is no person who has been governor of Nigeria 
a governor in the state of Nigeria, even the poorest state that did not become a billionaire. So what is happening is that they keep keep creating the pressure that the country is broke so that they will not deliver on their responsibilities as leaders who have been saddled with doing all these things. Let me give you an example. Go to Asokoro. Somebody can build a house that if you tear it down, can be 20 schools and they won't live there. They'll put the best toilets. Meanwhile, you need schools in their states. Put a German toilet there too now, you know, so that the students can use it and it will look good. But you build a mansion, you build a mansion that is, they will even brag about it, that is one, you know, the mansion, they bought the land for one billion, they built another two billion on it. They have mansions in Dubai, they have in America. But you, the, when, when your people then ask for schools, you say you are broke. They ask for water, you say you are broke. Where did you get the money to take care of your own personal interests? The second aspect of the question he asks is yes, cost. The cost of governance is too stupid. You understand? I will go after it. And one of the ways to go after it is to fix our constitution. That constitution is a fraud. We need a new constitution. It's a constitution that is making Nigerians. Nigerians need to make a new constitution. The Nigerian constitution made in 1999 has the introduction as we the people. That's a fraudulent statement. Nobody was there when they made the constitution in 1999. It was the military that wrote the constitution. As a matter of fact, when Obasanjo was to be sworn in, there was no single copy of the constitution. Asun Wodo, who was his minister of information, said they had to go and print a copy, rush to the swearing in ground. And what I would do as an executive is to make sure that we maintain a unique and collecting. And most of these House of Reps members, National Assembly, they are contractors. When they say they are doing oversight, it's extortion. So we need to get rid of all these drain pipes. You know, reduce number of ministries that have no value and ensure that the NNPC becomes accountable to the Nigerian people. The Nigerian people. Where transparently we know how many barriers of oil we sell on a daily basis, where it is going, and reduce the overhead costs. The NNPC overhead, the NNPC is a country within a country. You have to merge it with Nigeria. The NNPC has seceded from Nigeria since the 70s. So if you are fighting against Biafra secession, and uh, do I want to, you also have to fight against the secession of the NNPC. It has, so, it has become a country on its own that has seceded, and they didn't even fire a shot before they seceded. The final question that I have yes. for you today is, usually when uh, you fight corruption, corruption fights you back. Yeah, because yes. for, most of the time, the people are not ready for the change because some people benefit from it. I recently, someone tweeted and said, and Nigerians, when it, uh, uh, when corruption suits them, they call it favor, yeah. God's favor. How do you deal with these people with this mindset as well of Nigerians waiting for God to bless them through government? You see, largely, Nigerians are not different from citizens around the world. There's a pipeline for supporting your citizens. If you're not available, citizens will look for a way to take care of themselves. That's why you know, Nigerians are prolific you know, as brilliant people that we are, because you can't cage a Nigerian in seeking for means of enrichment. But you ask yourself, why is it that the Nigerian, when they leave the shores of Nigeria, they are doing well? Those people who they say jackpot to uh, Canada, they're already sending pictures back from the space. You know, we are doing well. See, see how things are. And some of them were bankers before they left here. They couldn't even afford to live the kind of life they are living as people washing plates in Canada. Now, that should not be the case. People are constricted in this space. They are denied of their fundamental economic rights. They are bound to want to look for ways of means of survival. So it, that's because it turned the country into a jungle. It became an animal farm. There was there's inequality, and that inequality has created desperation. When we restore economic and social benefits to the people, you are going to see that there will be more less of those. And of course, if other areas are functioning. Because you tell me honestly, if I work for 45 years and I'm at 60 and you don't pay my pension, what do you think I will do? I will have to figure out a way to cut corners so that I can at least live a bit comfortable. If I'm young and I'm in the university and you close my university for six months, I'm going to have to need to be doing something. So if a friend of mine tells me that there is a software that I can use to scam white people, well, I may not say that I'm doing that. But just to survive, 
it's not an excuse for uh -huh. for, for crime answer. you understand mm -hmm. and that's why government should work huh i tell people i lived in america for 20 years america is the most corrupt country in the world in fact they have the most corrupt streets in the world it's called wall street what do they do they just flip papers there they call it stock trading it's all it's all fraud but you know that what they are doing on Wall Street does not prevent you from riding on a good road, going to a good hospital, fairly good hospital, education. But even America for me is not the standard for real great standard of I mean like they don't have healthcare, for example. You go to school in America, you have to pay loans for over 30 years. Obama just finished paying his own finished after he became president and left. That's not my standard. The standard is a country like you know, Denmark, Norway, where their oil money is saved and every family has you know a certain amount allocated to them whether they want it or not they even pay students to remain in school in denmark so that is where we should be because we have had all this money stashed up in the hands of people it's time for the people to use their money i want to answer that last question about all right so we're yeah. already out of time already so all right we'll get into that real quick. yes all right. that nigerians it is up to you to decide whether you want to be in bondage or not. If you decide that this is how you want to keep trading your life, the party is set for you. They are happy that you vote for one of them again. But you can actually make that change this time around by voting for someone that is not expected to win. Because already they have done their calculations. They've done elimination series. This one cannot win. It's we that we win. And if we don't win, we have to let you know, That's the conversation. I mean, discussion.